Welcome to the first ever Growth Moments video from Franklin Road Baptist Church. We're excited about the opportunity to begin offering these on our social media accounts and also our YouTube channel. Our goal behind these is to give you an opportunity to take a moment in your day and grow spiritually. Now more than ever, I think it is valuable that we put intentional time and effort into our spiritual growth. If we don't prioritize it, it will begin to get pushed out in a distracted world. And so with that in mind, I want to take a simple question today on how do I find God in troubled times? How do I find God in troubled times? One of the things that is very evident in spiritual growth is that it goes in seasons. And many times there are seasons of great growth, but there's also seasons of decline or maybe some stagnant growth. That really goes with everything. If you plant crops or if you try to grow anything physically, you'll find that there are seasons where things are growing and where things are beginning to blossom, but there's also a time to where the ground is stagnant, to where the growth is maybe uh, not occurring. And here's what you'll see even in other areas of life is that moments of growth are often preceded by moments of dormancy or moments of decline. But the success of the moments of growth are normally dependent upon the intentionality of the moments of decline. I think we would all agree that the last couple of months have definitely been what we would call a season of decline. Times have changed, things have been different, and in some ways it seems like everything that we've ever worked for for the last couple of years is going backwards. The church is in decline. Finances are in decline. Christianity feels like that it is in decline. But one of the things that you and I know as a Christian and as a child of God is that while it may seem like everything is going backwards, the truth is, is that God still offers us an opportunity for growth. And in the midst of some very troubling times that can seem like that growth is going backwards, that can seem like that there's maybe a lot of questions and that we don't know what's going to happen next, we understand that God is in control. And so I want to take you to a passage today to answer that question of how do I find God in troubled times? And so if you've got maybe a pen or paper or maybe you want to jot this into your phone as you listen, then I would encourage you to Grab a Bible, follow along with us, and let's jot down some thoughts about some ways that we can grow right now in the midst of what seems like a very troubled time in our world. And so Psalm 77 is where we're going to be. We're going to look at just the first 14 verses, but I want you to notice something before we begin to read this passage, and that is that Psalm 77 really shows two different attitudes toward troubled times. You'll notice in the first nine verses that David is very troubled about what's going on around him. In fact, You'll even see some of the things that we're facing right now in 2020. Just recently, as I was reading through Psalm 77, I made a note in my Bible, and I referred to this as a psalm for 2020. You'll see that it is very much parallel to exactly what you and I are experiencing in today's society. And so Psalm 77 verse 1 says this, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. Aren't you glad that when we cry unto God that he gives ear unto us? But look at David's response, even though God heard him. It did not change really his attitude. In verse number two, he says, In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. I think that probably many of us could agree that there is a lot of complaining in the world. And my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. If that's not a snapshot of where many of us have been over the last couple of months and where really our world is going even right now, then I don't know what is. Those verses really speak to exactly what you and I have experienced. There's been complaining. Our spirits have been overwhelmed. Sometimes even the thought of what we are seeing and where maybe where we can't find God in the midst of all this chaos, it troubles us. But he moves on, verse number four. He says, Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? 
and will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies, Selah. Now, many times we look at that word Selah and we use it as an opportunity to say that it is a rest. It's a musical term. It's also an opportunity to stop and to think about what's just been talked about. And when he uses this word Selah in these first nine verses two times, he's actually pondering all of the negative. But I want you to notice in these last couple of verses where his mind goes when he thinks about all that is going on and all that's troubling him. What does his thoughts lead him to, and where does he begin to find God in the midst of this trouble? We see it in verse number 10. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Isn't it interesting that in the first nine verses, it is so evident the feelings that David has about these troubles. He says, I was overwhelmed. I was complaining. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't even begin to speak about it. And yet as he begins to ponder his problems and as he begins to think about his troubles, he begins to recognize God in the midst of those troubles. So how did he do that? And how can you and I do that in today's society? Trouble is all around us, and it's not our job to find the problems. It is our job to find Jesus Christ and God, who is the solution of the problems to our world. And so what does he do? First of all, he recalls the works of God. He recalls the works of God. You'll see this in verses 10 and 11. He says, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of of old. Three times he uses the word remember in verses 10 and 11 to say, I'm going to remember or recall what God has done for me in the past. And here's what you have to understand is many times the hope for today is found in the help of yesterday. The hope for today is many times found in the help of yesterday. If God has helped you in the past, if God has provided for you in the past, then that should give you hope for today. You say, well, I don't know that God has done anything for me. How about your salvation? How about the fact that he's provided you a a home in heaven for eternity if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? How about all the blessings that have been bestowed upon your life? Those are all pointing to the fact that God is with you in the midst of troubled times. So not only does he recall the works of God, but I want you to notice that secondly, he begins to ponder the works of God. Not only does he remember what God has done, but he begins to think about what God is doing. He begins to ponder this. He says in verse number 12, I will meditate also of all thy work. When we talk about meditating, when we talk about pondering, my mind always runs to Luke chapter number two. When we read the Christmas story, we typically close with verse number 19, where it says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Here's what Mary was recognizing in that moment that one of the greatest miracles that God had ever shown in human history had just occurred. And the mother of the child of God took time to step back and to recognize and to ponder and to think about what God was doing. And here's the sad truth, is that what you think about will begin to apply and will begin to play out in your life. You could say it like this, that what you spend your time thinking about will eventually be what you spend your time acting out. What you spend your time thinking about will eventually be what you spend your time acting out. And so if your thoughts are consumed with all of the negative, all of the things that the world says, well, this is what you should be doing, or this is why it's so bad, or this is why you should be fearful, those are all things that can begin to consume you. But if you begin to ponder what God is doing and what God has done in your life, it will begin to be what you act out, which leads us to this third thought, is not only must you recall the works of God and ponder the works of God, but let's begin to share the works of God. Look at verse number 12. 
He says at the end of the verse, and talk of thy doings. It's a sad state in America when we can share what we eat, we can share our political preferences, we can share news articles, we can share all of these things, and yet never take the time to share what God is doing in, your, in our lives. Can I ask you a very candid question? When was the last time you told someone else, whether saved or unsaved, what God had done in your life? When was the last time you actually shared something with maybe your spouse or maybe your children? This is what God is teaching me. You see, it's one thing to hold in our minds what God is doing, to remember what God has done, to begin to ponder and meditate on what he is doing. But there must come a point in every child of God's life where we begin to share what God is doing. And then the last thing is this. Not only must we recall the works of God, ponder the works of God, and share the works of God, but lastly, let's begin to wait on the wonders of God. Look at verse number 14. He says, Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. It's amazing when you read through the Bible how much of it is based upon waiting on God to do his work. You read through the Old Testament and many times God asks obedience of his people. And yet we have to wait and see what God does when he asks them to step out in obedience. You read through the New Testament and how much of the time of the disciples was, was spent waiting to see who this Messiah actually was and what it meant for them. The Christian life is not a life of impatience. It is a life of being still and waiting on God to do his work. And in verse number 14, he says, Thou art the God that doest wonders. That's a matter of fact. That is a statement of declaration that God will do the wonders. God will do the work. It is our job to wait on it, to recall what he has done, to, re, to ponder what he is doing and to share what he has done and is doing in our lives. So let me close with a challenge with these four thoughts. Take some time today, maybe even right now, to recall what God has done in your life. Take some time today to ponder and to meditate and to think about what God is doing or could be doing in your life and in this world. But then take some time to share it with someone else. Maybe that's through social media. Maybe that's through a conversation. But then step back and ask the Lord to allow you to be patient and wait on what God is going to do. The good news about this whole passage is that it's not based on a national context. It's a personal context. Meaning that while our world and our nation can go crazy and be troubled, you and I as Christians can begin to find God in the midst of trouble. If, the, if Christianity continues to decline, you and I as children of God can continue to find God in the midst of trouble. Take some time today, take some time this moment to begin to recall the works of God, ponder the works of God, share the works of God, and begin to wait on God to do the wondrous work that I know that he will do. Have a good day. Thanks for watching this growth moment.